Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Elmore Ring Bag, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description where you will find both right and left-handed video tutorials, a link to the written pattern, and links to all the supplies you need. To make this pattern, you'll need one skein of Bernat Softy Cotton in your choice of colors, a USJ 6mm Tunisian crochet hook. The one shown here is by Susan Bates, and it's about 10 inches long. That's about all you need for this pattern. You don't need one of the long ones with a cord. You'll also need your standard crochet supplies like a yarn needle, scissors, and stitch markers. And to finish the pattern, you'll want to have five inch across wooden purse rings or whatever handles of your choice. You may also choose to add a liner, but that's optional. The Elmore ring bag is made in one piece that is then folded in half and then seamed up the sides. The tops with the decreases are left open and there's a flap on each side to enclose the wooden handle. We just sew right over that wooden handle to enclose the ring in there and you're all set. As I say, you can then optionally add a lining. I do recommend it for this pattern. This pattern begins with a chain of 44. I'll be making a smaller sample today to demo with, but we can see I've just chained my length here. And although I'm using a Tunisian crochet hook, the chaining is, is exactly the same. After that, for our foundation row, we need to skip the chain closest to the hook and pull up a loop from each remaining chain. So we're going to be working into the back humps, not the back loop of the top V, but the back hump of the chain. We skip the one closest to the hook, go into the next one, yarn over and pull up a loop. And we're going to leave each of these loops on our hook. So since we start with a chain of 44, at the end of this forward pass of our foundation row, you should have a total of 44 loops on your hook because we skipped that first chain, but we already had a loop on our hook. This is a small difference between Tunisian crochet and standard crochet, where in standard crochet, we don't count that loop on our hook. The active loop is a stitch. For our forward pass here in Tunisian, we absolutely do. So continue to work across, pulling up a loop from each one of these chains until you've got all 44 loops on your hook. So after you've completed this forward pass of your foundation row, then it's time to work our return pass. And for this bag, for our foundation row, it's a standard return pass. This means that we chain one. So we yarn over and pull through just that first loop. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops and continue that all the way across until just one loop remains on your hook. For row one, we're going to be doing Tunisian simple stitch across. That means we skip the first stitch, which is this first vertical bar right here. Then we go to the next vertical bar, the one right at the front of our work, insert our hook under that vertical bar, yarn over and pull up a loop. We go to the next vertical bar, insert our hook right underneath, yarn over and pull up a loop. We're going to continue doing this all the way across until we have 43 loops on our hook and one stitch remaining at the very end. So I'll see you when we get to the end of row one. So when we get to the last stitch of the row, rather than going under just the front vertical bar, we want to go under both of those bars right along the sides so that it almost looks like we're working under the top V of a standard crochet stitch. So you just get under both of those loops with your hook and it can be a little tricky here on this first row. It does get easier as you go, but for this first row, go ahead and take your time if needed to get your hook in there. Then you can simply yarn over and pull up your loop just as before. After that, for row one, it's again a standard return pass. We chain one and then yarn over and pull through two all the way across until just one loop remains on our hook. Now we're ready to begin row two. And rows two and three are the rows we're going to repeat to create the lace for this bag. So to begin our row two forward pass, we're actually going to start with a chain one. There we are. Then we're going to skip the first three stitches. So that means skipping the first three vertical bars here. One, two, and three. So here's the fourth one right here. Then we're going to work a Tunisian double stitch in that next stitch, that fourth stitch there. This means we yarn over, go under that front vertical bar, just as if it was a Tunisian simple stitch, 
yarn over again, pull up a loop, and yarn over and pull through two. But we stop right there. We don't want to finish that double crochet or we'll lose that first loop. This is our forward pass, so we need to keep that last loop of each stitch on our hook. Then what we want to do is working in front of the previous stitch, so that double crochet we just made, we're going to Tunisian double crochet in the second skipped stitch. So we come back and look at our work here. That's the first skipped stitch. That bar right there is going to be the second skipped stitch. So we yarn over, go under that bar, same way we do for a Tunisian simple stitch, yarn over, pull up our loop, give that a little tug if you need to, yarn over, and we're gonna very carefully pull through just those first two loops, leave that last loop there on the hook. So now we've got three loops on our hook. Then we're going to skip the next two stitches, and this right here begins our repeat that will take us the rest of the way across till we get to that last stitch. Skip the next two stitches, Tunisian double stitch in the stitch after that, yarn over, again, just the same as a Tunisian simple stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and then we're going to Tunisian double stitch in the first skipped stitch. So this time, remember, we only skipped two. We wanna leave that middle one unworked. We're gonna come back to that first one we skipped. Yarn over, go right under that loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, very carefully pull through just those first two loops on the hook there. There we are. So now we've made basically two little sets of X's there. And that's what we're going to continue doing all the way across. Let's do one more of those repeats together. Go ahead and yarn over in preparation. We're gonna skip those next two vertical bars. Let's pull that out so they're a little easier to see here. There we are. We've worked into that one. So we wanna skip these two here. Come to that third one. Insert our hook, yarn over. Yarn over and pull through two. Then we're going to yarn over again. Find that first stitch back there that we skipped. Insert our hook under that vertical bar. Yarn over and pull up our loop. Yarn over and pull through just the first two loops there to finish that stitch. So continue that series. Skip two. Tunisian double stitch in the next stitch. Tunisian double stitch in the first skipped stitch all the way across until just one stitch remains. So on my tiny little sample, I'm already there and we've come to that last stitch. You can see we've done our last sort of crossed stitches here. The first one went into that second to last stitch. The one that crossed it went into that first skip stitch. We've got one stitch remaining. So now we want to work a Tunisian double stitch to finish this row off, but we're going to again sort of turn and work it under both of those vertical bars right along the edge there. Then we can yarn over, pull up our loop from there, yarn over and pull through those first two loops, and we have finished our forward pass for row two. Then we get to do the row two return pass. Now we're ready for our row two return pass, but it's not our standard return pass. Instead, we chain one, which does begin the same way as the other ones, Yarn over and pull through two, but now we chain one again. And I want you to note that that chain one sort of ends up between the stitches from that crossed stitch. So we've gone under that first one, now we chain one, then we yarn over and pull through two again. Yarn over and pull through two again. Chain one. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. See, now we're back in the middle of that crossed stitch. Chain one. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. Oop, <laughs> there we go. Back in the middle there, chain one. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. We're in the middle of that last one. You'll have a few more of these, of course. I've got a smaller sample here. We chain one. Yarn over and pull through two. And now with just those two, last two loops left on the hook, we yarn over and pull through those two to finish off our row two return pass. So let's pull that out here, and that is a smaller sample, a little narrower sample, of what your row two should look like after it's all finished. So now we can begin row three, which is the second row of our two row lace repeat. We start by skipping that first stitch. So again, that's that first vertical bar right there. And then we're going to Tunisian simple stitch in the next stitch. So that bar right there, we just go right into that next stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. 
then we've got that chain one right there. If we pull it open, you can see there's that chain one. We're going to do what's called a make one in the chain space. We simply insert our hook right in that chain space, yarn over, and pull up another loop. Then we Tunisian simple stitch in the second half of that set of crossed Tunisian double crochet stitches right there. And that right there is our repeat that take us on across. We come to that next set of crossed stitches right there with our chain one in between, Tunisian simple stitch in that first leg. Go right into that chain one space, yarn over and pull up a loop, it's called make one. Go into that second Tunisian double stitch as a Tunisian simple stitch right there. So let's do that one more time. We've got another little X right there. We go into the first stitch for a Tunisian simple stitch, make one in the chain space, and then Tunisian simple stitch in the next stitch. To continue across, Tunisian simple stitch in the next stitch, make one in the chain space, Tunisian simple stitch in the next stitch. And we'll continue that all the way across until we get to that very last stitch again. Now when we get to that last stitch for our forward pass of row three, you can see it looks a little different because this is a Tunisian double stitch. So it doesn't have that really, we don't want to work all the way down here. That would be working to the bottom of the stitch. We kind of want to work into the top half of the stitch so that we maintain the height of our row. So what we're going to be doing, we still want to get those two vertical bars here on the outside, but essentially it's a Tunisian knit stitch. Same thing, but officially it's got a little bit of a different name but the main thing is to go under those two outside bars right there. It's called Tunisian knit stitch because we're kind of going to the front of the stitch like that all the way through to the back of the fabric. Again, the same move, it's just actually worked in a slightly different part of the stitch, so it does officially have its own name. So that completes our row three return pass, or excuse me, our row three forward pass. We haven't done the return pass yet, but I did want to point out, you can see how our fabric is starting to curl and it really wants to curl up towards me here. This is very normal with Tunisian fabric. And after we've seamed up the sides of our purse and added our handles, you don't have to worry about that curling anymore. So don't let that freak you out. Now we're ready for our row three return pass, but for row three return pass, it's a standard return pass again. Chain one by pulling through just that first loop, then yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, all the way across until you've got that one loop left on your hook. So as you can see, at the end of the row three return pass, we've got all our loops ready here for our repeat of row two. So row two, row three, row two, row three are repeated until you've got approximately 41 rows done, or you've got more length if you want, or less length if you're adjusting the length of your bag. Basically, this is going to be the majority of the actual pouch portion of your bag, but we're going to be folding it in half this way. So if you want to change the length of your bag, you can absolutely do this at this time. Otherwise, repeat rows two and three through row 41, and then we'll move on to row 42. Rows 42 and 43 are all simply rows of Tunisian simple stitch. Let's do one more of those together. We're going to skip that first stitch of the row, go to the second vertical bar, and insert your hook and yarn over and pull up a loop. Just continue to do that in each one of those vertical bars across. You'll be working into a, uh, for the for row 42, you'll be working into a row three rep, just like this one. So it'll be longer, but it'll look just like this. So as I say, this is what we do for row 42, row 43, and row 44. After you've done your Tunisian simple stitch across for the forward pass, it's a standard return pass back across to return. So after row 44, then we begin the begin decreases section. And this gives us that top shape that opens up on top of our bag, as well as that handle flap. So row one of begin decreases is actually a repeat of row two our forward pass. We chain one and we work those Tunisian double stitch crosses all the way across, just as we did in row two. So I'll see you at the end of row one of our begin decreases. So our first row of decreases forward pass is just like row two of our lace, but we're going to be actually doing a standard return pass. We're not adding that chain one back in between those crosses at all. So that really starts pulling in those sides. We chain one, of course, and then just yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, all the way across until we've got that one loop left on our hook. Row two of our decreases is simply another row of Tunisian simple stitch. 
So as before, and as always, we skip that very first stitch of the row and simply Tunisian simple stitch across, making sure we go under those two outer loops at the end. Then for row two, we'll have a standard return pass again. So I'll see you at the end of row two of our decreases. Row three of our decreases is another one of those Tunisian double crochet rows, but we've got a few too many stitches. Basically, we need to skip an extra stitch in the middle of the row. I've got my small sample here, but we can kind of work through it for our full length sample here. We start again with our chain one and skip the first three stitches, of course, and Tunisian double stitch in the next stitch. Yarn over, Tunisian double stitch in that second stitch. There we are, just as before. And then you do that same repeat. Skip the next two, Tunisian double crochet in that next stitch, Tunisian double crochet in the first skip stitch, but you're going to only do that particular repeat three times. So let's go ahead and on our little sample here, we'll do it one more time. Skip the next two, Tunisian double stitch in the next stitch, yarn over, in that first skipped stitch. And again, in your full size one, you'll do that three times. So you'll have a four, total of four of those X's made. Then we need to do it a little bit differently one time. The next time, instead of skipping two, you're actually going to skip three. This just lets it work out for the numbers of our bag here and continue those decreases. So for that center one on your full size bag, you'll work your Tunisian double stitch there and then go back. And then what you'll need to do is Tunisian double stitch in that first skipped stitch. So you'll actually have two skipped stitches in between there. So we wanna come back, oops, don't forget that yarn over, and Tunisian double stitch in the first one you skipped there. So for that center cross in your full size bag, you'll actually have two skipped stitches in between. Then you go back to your standard repeats until you get down just one stitch left there at the end. So at the end of your row three forward pass, you should have four of those little X's, a great big X in the center, and then four more of those X's with that, your final Tunisian double crochet stitch right there. That would give you a total on the full size of 20 loops in your forward pass for row three. For the return pass row three, it's again a standard return pass. We chain one and then yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, all the way across till one, loop remains on your hook. Row four is another row of Tunisian simple stitch, just as we've been doing all the way across with a standard return pass. And then row five is another repeat of that row two lace. This time you don't have to do anything fancy with it. It's just the same way we've been working our row two lace repeats all along. At the end of row five, you should have 14 loops in your forward pass and work it off like a standard return pass. Our final row of decreases is row six. We're going to be working a row of Tunisian simple stitch again. And although we didn't chain one on our return pass for row five, we're still going to be making one in between those crossed stitches, those legs of those crossed stitches. So essentially we're going to skip that first stitch, go into the next one, a Tunisian simple stitch. Then even though there's no chain one there, we're still going to go right into that space and make one. Make sure we get a Tunisian simple stitch in the second leg of that crossed set of stitches there. And then we're on to the next set. Tunisian simple stitch in the first, go right between those stitches to make one, and Tunisian simple stitch in the next. Continue that on across, and of course, make sure you work under both of those outer vertical bars. At the end of your row six forward pass, you should have a total of 20 loops on your hook. After that, it's a standard return pass. Chain one, and then yarn over and pull through two all the way across. After that, we'll be ready to make our handle flaps. The handle flaps are simple rows of Tunisian simple stitch followed by standard return passes, basically made to the length needed to fit around your handle. So I do recommend you go ahead and pick up your handles at this point if you haven't already so that you can see just how much length you're going to need to work to get around whatever sort of opening your handle has. But again, those are standard Tunisian simple stitches with a standard return pass. So I worked through 14 total rows there, but you can work however many are needed for your handles. Then we're ready to bind off. To do our Tunisian slip stitch bind off, we keep our hook in front of our work throughout 
And we work basically Tunisian simple stitches, but we're going to be slip stitching through so that we keep just one loop on our hook. So we skip that first stitch, insert under that front vertical bar, just as we do for a Tunisian simple stitch, yarn over and pull up our loop, and then just pull that loop right on through. I do like to give it a little tug so that it doesn't become really tight, but basically slip stitch that loop right on through. Then we find the next vertical bar, insert our hook, pull up our loop, give that just a little tug, and pull that new loop right on through. So we're just going to continue binding off our work just like this until we get down to one loop left on our hook. And then we can finish it off just like we normally do with any standard crochet. So as you can see with our bind off, we end up with just one stitch there on the forward pass. We don't need to make a return pass for our bind off. But before you cut your yarn, I want you to leave a nice long tail. We can use that tail to sew that flap down around our handle without having to add more ends to weave in. So you'll want to leave a nice long tail before you cut your yarn. So now we've got a long section of lace with decreases, but we need to add the decreases for the other side. So we're going to flip our bag around and rejoin to that foundation chain, the chain that we started our whole project with. We want to join from the right side. So we'll have the slip knot right there, right next to that first stitch we want to join to. And we can just go right under both loops of that stitch right there and basically join with a slip stitch, get it nice and attached. We wanna sort of pull that down really tight because remember, this is Tunisian crochet. So we actually have our first stitch already on our hook. After that, we simply Tunisian simple stitch in each stitch across. So let's take a close look here. We want to find those vertical bars that we made when we were working across. The first one's going to be right here. We slip stitch to this one. So we've got our first vertical bar that we need to think about right here. We're going to go right in here. Even though we're kind of coming from the opposite side, oops, we can still, if we can get them to stay on our hook here, pick up those loops. There we go. Just come across, find that next one. These might be a little bit tighter. That's okay, just take your time. And you still want to pull up a loop from each one of these stitches. So it's gonna be just a little bit different than your other Tunisian simple stitches. You're gonna have just a little bit more happening in the back of the fabric, but that's okay. And we still want to end up with a total of 44 stitches again on our hook at the end of this first row of the other side. This is a section of the, I keep accidentally pulling those back off. This is the section of the pattern marked make other side. And we're working into the bottom of the foundation chain. It's a little bit of a misnomer. We're not really working to the bottom of the foundation chain except to join that first stitch because we're picking up those vertical bars so we can make our Tunisian simple stitches. From the outside of the bag, we really want this to just look like any other section of Tunisian simple stitches. And it really, really does. So again, just continue to pick up your Tunisian simple stitches all the way across your foundation row here, and then work a standard return pass back across. After row one of Make Other Side, you do another row of Tunisian simple stitch for row two, and then you begin that same decreases section, beginning with row one of the decreases on through the handle flap again. You'll wanna make the same number of rows for your second handle flap as you did for your first handle flap. Then, of course, you'll have sort of a long piece like this with lace in the middle, decreases on both sides, and handle flaps on both sides. At that point, we're able to fold it in half right across our lace rows around approximately, you know, row 20 or so of our lace. However, before you block and seam up those sides, I do recommend that you try and block out your bag a little bit. And if you use the recommended yarn and hook size, it should be approximately 11 inches wide or so. Then, as I say, you fold it right down the middle here and we seam right up the sides, right up until we get to where those decreases begin. So those end flaps right over your handles and you'll be all finished. Let's take one more look at the finished bag. So on our finished bag, we started right here. Then we made all these rows of lace all the way to here, worked those rows of Tunisian simple stitch and then our rows of decreases. Then. I flipped it back over, came back here. You can see just a hint there of where I ended up joining that row to make our second uh, set of Tunisian simple stitches, then another set of decreases, and again, a handle flap that's as long as needed to fit over the style of handles that you've chosen for your bag. As you can see, I blocked it out straight, 
And then I seamed up the sides right up to wherever you like, really. I kind of stopped right around those sections of Tunisian Simple Stitches so that I could have a nice big opening here for my bag. As I say, I do recommend lining it, and I have linked to a couple of different lining tutorials in the written pattern, so you can check those out as well. And that's how to crochet the Elmore Ring Bag. Again, you can go to the link in the description or search for Moogly Blog Elmore Ring Bag to get the free written pattern and right and left-handed video tutorials. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.